This is Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, where a dedicated medical team of a thousand work round the clock to transform the lives of children when they need it most. Coming up, doctors work hard to find the right diagnosis for 14-month-old Ruby. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. 11-year-old Johan arrives in A&E after things in his needlework class go badly wrong. It hurt a flipping lot. And a trip to the dentist with a difference for 14-year-old Brian. One of the greatest challenges faced by doctors is making the right diagnosis for their patients. Here in A&E, staff often come across children who are more seriously ill than meets the eye. 14-month-old Ruby Tanswell's breathing is very raspy. She's had medication for a chest infection, but to little effect. Her parents, Adele and Lee, are so worried they've cut their holiday short. We were in Spain. We came back early because Ruby wasn't well. And since then, she's just getting worse. So I just wanted to get her sorted. Yeah. A&E staff suspect Ruby's symptoms may be due to something more serious. So they've called in ear, nose and throat consultant Ian Bruce. How long should you be making this noise for? About six days. Yeah. Any yeah. yeah. times where she's got blue around the lips or anything like that? Breathing like this can be caused by a range of things. Mr Bruce must look and listen for clues if he's to give Ruby the right diagnosis. <laughs> well, we've certainly got a child who's working harder to breathe, had two doses of steroids, which is a good idea for the docs that saw you before. It's not making any difference. And this has been going on for about five days now, hasn't it? So all those things together, I think we need to have a look at the airway with her asleep, actually. Now, it's very difficult to know what we'll find necessarily in, in, until we do that. Ruby will be given a general anaesthetic and a tiny camera fed down her throat to see what's there. It's just a shot, I just didn't expect it at all. I'm just scared. But I just want her to be better, so whatever it takes. Nothing's showing up on Ruby's X-ray, but Mr Bruce suspects there may be something blocking her windpipe. It's a slightly unusual picture as um, things stand at the moment, but we certainly have to exclude diagnosis such as a foreign body. Could be anything, could be a piece of Lego, could be a pin, things like that. But, unfortunately, the surgical investigation late that night found not an everyday object in Ruby's windpipe, but an unusual growth. It will take all of the ENT department's expertise to find out what it is and how best to treat it. It's another busy day in A&E. And 11-year-old Yon's just arrived after things took a turn for the worse during his needlework class. I was talking to my mate and the sewing machine was on and I accidentally, the sewing machine went up, down, up, down through my finger. It hurt a flipping lot. Yon's already had an injection to numb the nerves in his finger, but he's remarkably calm for someone with an injury that looks so painful. He gets animated watching the football sometimes, but uh, when, he's, uh, when he's hurt, he's been very brave and uh, calm and collected. On duty today is Dr Ian Scott. He's been working in A&E for four years and knows things could have been considerably worse. As we can see from this lovely X-ray, it's going through the finger, but luckily hasn't gone through the bone or anything like that. Uh, it's not the most common thing we see. It's time to tackle the needle. Hello, I believe we've already done the injections to numb this all up. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. So now we just need to try and get this out, OK? OK. OK, so nice and still. Ewan's being incredibly brave. That's all that I've done. How was that? It was good. It's just a bit of pressure. Yeah. 
That looks fine, okay. We just need to pop a little dressing on this. Okay. And that's all we need to do. Thanks to Ewan's laid-back approach, Dr Scott's job today has been satisfyingly straightforward. It's absolutely perfect, wasn't it? No problems at all. Quickly came out very nicely, so, yeah, it was good. Nice, quick, easy. Next one. <laughs> Show us a high five. On Ward 77, 14-month-old Ruby's about to go to surgery. Well done, high five. Oh, yay! She was brought into a and &E two days ago with a suspected chest infection. Instead, a surgical investigation discovered an unusual growth in her windpipe that's stopping her from breathing properly. Can't even describe how shocked we are. It didn't occur to me for one minute that it'd be with anything but a chest infection. It's hard to take on board and hard for it to sink in, really. Okay. Mike Rotherer is one of Britain's leading paediatric ear, nose and throat surgeons. It's his job to find a definite diagnosis for Ruby and with it, the treatment she needs. I'm going to have a look down, see exactly what's causing the blocking. And I'd like to remove most of it on this occasion. The most important thing here is to protect her airway. But I'll come and speak to you immediately afterwards to let you know what's going on. See you both shortly. Thank you very much. For Ruby's shell-shocked family, it's a difficult goodbye. They'll be very anxious until this is sorted out. And there's no way around that. All you can do is just be honest with them and make sure you protect their child's airway. OK, let's have the camera system. Right, OK. There is the oh, swelling. Okay, it's very obvious she's why she's not being able to breathe, because she's got a swelling at the back of her trachea. Looks unusual. And if we go beyond that... God, that's pretty narrow. It's narrow, isn't it? The growth is blocking around 70% of Ruby's windpipe. That is not straightforward. Mr Rotherer is now in uncharted territory. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. I have no idea what it is. Samples are gathered and sent to the labs where pathologists will analyse the growth. Those are the ones that are going to give us the diagnosis. And we've got to remove some more of this to improve the airway. You can see that white area there. We still need to remove some more of that. That's looking better. So we've got a much better airway there. The bulk of the growth is gone, but a part remains embedded in the wall of Ruby's windpipe with the danger it might grow back. Her airway will be safer, but she's not out of the woods yet by any means. I'll be a lot happier when I know the pathology. Ruby will be able to breathe more easily now, but Mr Rotherer cannot yet give her waiting parents a diagnosis. It's unusual, and I've been looking after children for you know, over 20 years looking down airways day in, day out. And, and this is unusual. It's different to anything else exactly that I've seen. The family will have to wait another 48 hours before test results reveal exactly what the growth is and the kind of treatment Ruby will need. This is Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, and if you dread going to the dentist, then you'll completely sympathise with 14-year-old Brian. But thanks to a pioneering dental service for teenagers, his treatment is about to get a whole lot easier. Brian's in the middle of ongoing dental work and is back at the hospital today with his mum, Susan, for the final part of his treatment. But there's a problem. He's terrified. It's just when I sit down in the chair, I get paranoid on what's going to happen because, like, I see all the tools and, like, the needles and stuff. He just panics when he sits in that chair. And then as soon as the dentist goes near him, that's it, Brian refuses to have treatment. 
Luckily for Brian, consultant dentist Claire Stevens is pioneering a sedation treatment which up until recently has only ever been used on adults. He's one of the first teenagers in the hospital to be given the powerful sedative drug propofol, which means he won't need to have a general anaesthetic. All right, good. Do you want to come through? The um, propofol will act as a sedative, so it is taking away some of those worries that he had about the prospect of dental treatment. It's making him more relaxed without making him go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Hi, come and have a seat. Brian braved the first that? part of his treatment a month ago. He's needed a total of seven fillings and he's having the final four today. I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but I trust her with everything that goes on in the chair. Look this way. You'll have to put up with me, Brian, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's worth it because I want to keep my teeth as long as I can. Propofol needs to be administered with great care. It's anaesthetist Shan Rolf's job to monitor Brian throughout the procedure. It acts very quickly and it wears off very quickly. So we just run it continuously at a low rate all the way through whilst Claire's doing what she's doing. And almost immediately, <laughs> the drug starts to take effect. It's kind of weird, everything's blurred. Yeah, that's good. It's a sign it's all getting to work. I'm going to pop you back a bit, OK? OK. Good, ma'am. Look at you, what a pro. <laughs> good lad. That's it. Now that he's nicely relaxed, Brian's more than happy for Mrs Stevens to begin her work. OK, okay big wide stretch for me. Let me have a little look around. Wow! That's super. I've never known him to be so quiet. It's brilliant. <laughs> big stretch again for me, then. Brian, that's... Don't dislocate your jaw. Right, last little bit, Brian, OK? OK. Well done. It takes a lot of guts to come in and, and face something that you're really worried about. I mean, he's making it look very, very easy, but actually this is the end of a very long journey and he's done remarkably well. I'm incredibly proud of him. Well done. Four fillings well done. later, Brian has survived the final part of his treatment. How many out of ten do you reckon? Ten. It's success all round. It felt great because I was just calm and awake and I could, like, see everything that was going on. You OK? Yeah. Not too wobbly? Yeah. Twizzle around then. I hope that he now feels a lot less anxious about the prospect of dental treatment and to be able to remember this as a positive experience, one that he didn't think he was able to manage but did and actually managed really well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well. 14-month-old Ruby is enjoying life on Ward 77, unaware of the events unfolding around her. What is it? Is it a doggy? Doctors have discovered an unusual growth in her windpipe that they now know is a tumour. Her devastated family are waiting for test results to reveal whether it's malignant. I just want to get better. I hope it's not... I hope it is benign. I hope it's not cancerous. Um... <laughs> The final results aren't back yet, but Ruby's consultant, ear, nose and throat surgeon Mike Rotherer, is here to give them an update. I've had a really good look at the scan and I've been to the pathologist and talked to them this morning. So I know where this is, I know the limits of it, but until I have what we call a tissue diagnosis, I can't give you the answer you what, which is precisely what is going on there. She's just got the one tumour, it's not two. This, everything else on the scan was clear. There was nothing in the lungs, no adjacent swellings. So you don't know if it's benign or not yet? No, and I'd love to be able to tell you that, but I don't yet know until I get the final diagnosis. Oddly enough, because it's occurred in the windpipe, this has presented early. So that's good, although it's scary for you guys. But you are in the right place. There are lots of people around who really know how to sort this out. I'll see you later. <laughs> we was hoping for good news, but you won't tell us till he knows for sure. And it's still that anxious wait. The following day, Ruby's parents receive the news that no family wants to hear. The tumour is cancerous. It's every parent's worst nightmare, and it is devastating. 
Having said that, the prognosis for many childhood tumours is extremely good. Four weeks on, the family have started to adjust to the heartbreak of a cancer diagnosis. At first I couldn't control the tears, I was just constantly crying, but Ruby's obviously picking up on that and so now I've not cried in front of her for about two, two and a half weeks, so I'm really proud. It takes me an extra half an hour longer to get yeah. home at night. You just stop suffering that's just cry. So I, I, I take a long way home and just keep myself to myself. Mm. <laughs> Everybody hates to hear the word cancer or malignant tumour, um, but a lot of it is conquering the fear. <laughs> bit by bit, you can make this horrible condition seem less threatening, and then when you start to see your child getting better, uh, slowly, some of that fear goes away. Now, Ruby comes to the hospital once a week to receive chemotherapy via a drip, which doctors hope will shrink the tumour. Hey, Speedy, get back here. She's adapted well to her treatment and is experiencing few side effects. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. She's been her usual self. It's not seemed to bother her at all. She's still really lively. She's a bit more restless at night. She just wants comforting. But other than that, she's doing well. Cancer of the windpipe like Ruby's is so rare, there's only been a handful of recorded cases worldwide. But early diagnosis has given her the best possible chance of a cure. Thankfully, the problems that most children turn up with in A&E are relatively straightforward. Of the 40,000 children staff see here every year, hundreds of them have fractures. Nicole, come through. And Professor Simon Carley's next patient might be about to add to that number. We're going to nip into this room just on the right there. 14-year-old Nicole's been a bit too boisterous with the boys. I was in school and some guy went like that in my hand. When was this? Last week. It wasn't malicious. It was both messing about, so... Okay. Mm. But it's boys, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not just Nicole's schoolmates that experience her fighting spirit. And then on Friday, my dad would come home from a night out and we were messing about and then we were kind of play fighting and hit him. She hit me. I she didn't hit her. <laughs> for the record, I didn't hit her. Just for the record, no. it caught me elbow right where she'd banged it a few days before. Don't mess with the best. Don't mess with the best, kid. Told you this. <laughs> Okay, can you do something for me? Can you just um, pop your hands, things out straight as you can? And can you make a fist? Yeah. If you notice here, it just looks as if you've lost a knuckle. See? One, two, three, four. Mm. One, two, three... Gone. <laughs> yeah, gone. And that's usually because this bone, the metacarpal bone, has broken. Mm. And do you know what it's called? Have a while, I guess. What sort of fracture? Who would get this? A boxer. That's right. It's probably a boxer's fracture. Um, right, should we send you around and get a quick picture taken? Professor Carley needs an X-ray to confirm his diagnosis. And sure enough, Nicole's hand is broken. Yeah, okay. that's quite a good one, isn't it, really? <laughs> Would you just leave it now to heal itself? Yeah, we'll strap it up. Um, so we'll, we'll strap these two things together, put a bandage on it to give it a little bit of support and we'll follow you up in the fracture clinic. I mean, this is going to heal quite nicely. It's not a bad thing. About three to four weeks to heal. Um, so between now and then, you've got to be a little bit careful. I don't want, really want you to fall on it again. Nicole's hands strapped up and she's ready to go. She'll be giving the boys a wide berth, for a while at least. Don't mess with Dad or any boys. Yeah. Leave the boys up to the boys. <laughs> Keep my hands to myself. It's been 10 weeks since Ruby was diagnosed with cancer of the windpipe and her treatment's going well. Her family and friends have organised a sponsored walk to raise funds for the hospital. The reason why I do this is the hospital have been absolutely amazing with Ruby and we just want to give something back to them and they deserve a million times more than we can give them but it's a lot of something that we can do back for them. She loves attention at any time so all these people, she'll be loving it. 
<laughs> You're all mental. This is freezing. Well done for doing it. We're going to do this warm up now so you don't hurt yourself. It never ceases to amaze me how unbelievably well parents and children deal with this kind of adversity. Uh, you, know, you look at Ruby's parents, they're quite remarkable. Um, they've got fantastic family support. It's, it's amazing to see. It's humbling, it's really good. We've only just started, but I'm not <laughs> Our expectations are always that we're going to get a complete cure. We will push the child and the parents to the limits in order to get that, and they understand that. So far, Ruby's course of chemotherapy has dramatically reduced the size of her tumour. She will need further treatment, including surgery, but staff are hopeful they'll be able to cure her. Can you scooby kissing his head? <laughs>